Welcome back everyone and a huge thank you to all the cyber sleuths who sent in vital information, including those in the chat right here that I missed in my last video. So today we're diving into a major twist surrounding Jay Slater's mysterious disappearance. We're going to have a closer look at his known rival and an explosive and exclusive leak from his most recent live stream that could hold critical clues. And we will be also taking a closer look at Down the Rapids after some crazy information has come out about him. But before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell so we can keep pushing for justice in Jay Slater's case. So Jay Slater's gone, but the hunt's not through. Every twist we find brings us closer to the truth. Isn't that right, Gabby? A key source has come forward, revealing that the last person to see Jay alive, a convicted substance dealer, Ayub Kasim, allegedly took a sudden flight back to the UK when his place is in Tenerife. Suspicious clues at the B&B continues to raise questions. From deep cleaning to freshly painted steps, something is just not adding up. And even Jay's own family wants answers because Warren has come forward in a recent TikTok saying that he doesn't buy it either. I mean, why did Jay take this dangerous journey? Why didn't he charge his phone? And most importantly, was he ever at the B&B at all because there's absolutely no proof that he made it there. There are just so many unanswered questions in this case, but one thing is for certain. This story is unraveling fast and it's raising more red flags by the day. So buckle up because we're about to break down some startling new details, including a comment from a rave video that suggests a far more sinister plot at play. So the comment I'm about to read you from a user is in response to this video, where sleuths believe they can hear Brad calling for Jay's rival, Tom. In this video, you can see Lucy, Brad, and Jay all partying at the energy rave together. And actually, I just wanna point out that Jay actually seems coherent in this video and he still has a bag around him. Whereas in later videos, he appears to be like stumbling around and it almost like he was slipped something. And a lot of sleuths actually believe that this could be the result while well, his disappearance and what happened to him could be a result of accidentally an OD, but that's a whole other theory. I played this in my last video, but a sleuth went ahead and cleaned up the audio and you can actually hear Brad calling for Tom. <laughs> and thank you to Molly Jane for that one. So a big question was if Tom was ever in Tenerife. And when Tom Hilton was asked this question directly by a sleuth, he immediately got defensive and says, quote, I'll make you go missing, end quote, which is a very weird foreshadowing of what happened to Jay. So early on in the case, many defended Tom actually saying that he might actually be on probation and can't leave the UK for Tenerife. But Tom just said in his most recent live stream that he was in Majorca, Spain, on June 17th, the day Jay went missing. And one sleuth in my last video actually pointed out that this contradicts what his defenders were saying that he couldn't leave the UK because he said himself that he was in Majorca. This sleuth, B, writes that, quote, they were all at the rave that night. Believe me, Tom Tom's six pals lured Jay to be deleted, end quote. And this comment is riling up the sleuths right now because there has been a theory going around for a while that what happened to Jay was an act of revenge on behalf of Tom. Jay allegedly ratted out his friends for the 2021 altercation that resulted in Tom's skull getting exposed. And Jay went to Tenerife to celebrate finishing his unpaid work, which was a lesser sentence than what all his gang members received because Jay cooperated with authorities. According to this comment, six of Tom Hilton's friends were there at the rave and lured Jay to meet his demise. There was this theory very early on in the case that Tom's dad met Ayub because they were both locked up at the same time. But this is unconfirmed, but it was said that Tom's dad and Ayub conspired to get rid of Jay. And sleuths right now are working tirelessly to potentially identify these six people that 
apparently lured Jay out of the energy rave to meet his fate. Because as we've discussed, it looks like Tom and Brad are closer than we ever imagined. And some say maybe Tom and Brad were actually closer to each other than Brad was to Jay. And Brad and Lucy were found to be liking Tom's pictures on his Facebook. And Lucy vacationed with Tom in Malta just shortly before Jay went missing. Then sleuths have found the person who was partying with Ayub shortly after Jay went missing, which is allegedly one of Tom's friends because they say this is the same person in Tom's shot as seen with partying with Ayub from his Instagram. One person's name who keeps coming up is Davis Hargreaves, who was also part of the gang that targeted Tom with Jay. So I want to respect Jay's family to say that Jay was not a part of this altercation, but merely provided his statement to authorities. Wax Unfiltered pointed out that Davis appeared to know Jay had passed before anyone else did in this status update. And a sleuth on YouTube believes that Davis might have worked for Ayub at one point. So Ayub was found to be a kingpin of transporting substances in the UK, and they allege Davis was a part of this operation as well. So this idea that Tom Hilton made friends with some of Jay's friends after Jay was betrayed by his friends because they all just like switched sides and became friends with Tom lines up perfectly with this clue I received from a now deleted account. So a viewer on my last live brought up another strange accident involving someone who also knew Tom. But just like in the Jay Slater case, not everything is as it seems. Tom's alleged friend, also from Rishton, was involved in an accident very similar to Jay. So 19-year-old Josh Sharp passed away after, quote, losing control, end quote, of his motorcycle at an off-road track with no witnesses. But this one viewer tipped me off that the rumor is the brakes on the motorcycle were tampered with to cause this mishap. Strangely, and this is a rumor I can't verify, his head was smashed in, which could have been consistent with something other than an accident. And coincidentally, Jay was said to have had the same blunt force to his head, showing a potential modus operandi, or MO. But because Jay was found at the bottom of a cliff, his passing was also ruled an accident, and Josh was found on an off-road track with his motorcycle damaged, I guess, so he was also ruled an accident. Josh's event happened on June 22nd, only five days after Jay went missing, and the Manchester police are appealing for witnesses, because much like in the Jay case, there are none. So rest in peace, Josh, and I hope his family gets justice. But a sleuth has revealed that they believe Josh was a part of the gang that targeted Tom, but they were not of age. Josh wasn't of age, so they weren't named publicly. It's a bit confusing, but all of Jay's friends somehow switched sides and they became friends with Tom. When Tom's friend passed, Tom made this update and pretended that he was friends with Josh even though Josh allegedly was a part of the group that targeted him. So a little confusing, but let's just read this together. Quote, can't believe I'm writing this today, but today my very good mate has sadly passed away motocross riding. I can't believe what I'm hearing. We have so many good times. He was a very good kid with a good heart. End quote. So this part actually gives me chills because it lines up to that comment I showed you earlier from the rave video. It appears to be talking about some sort of gang because it says here, this person screenshotted what Tom wrote and wrote over it, quote, wish people would listen to me. I mentioned the seven way before Josh passed away. His bike was tampered with, and I know it's hard to believe, but Lucy gets what she wants if she wants people to do stuff and tamper with things, including clues. It happens, this girl is dangerous. End quote. So allegedly, Lucy sort of sets people up. And this is also what that insider said very early on, that Lucy got Jay involved in this underworld. And then people say that Jay was set up by this gang of seven people who are now six. There's been an interesting Twitter thread that appears to show why Tom is important in Jay's case. So this sleuth wrote that in their research, Quote, the targeting of Tom Hilton wasn't forgotten. Regardless of the post that Tom put on his Facebook, 
about it being forgotten. This is untrue and he was just removing himself from this. And Debbie, Jay's mother, stated in comments on Facebook that her home was being marked for people trying to burn it down before all this happened. The windows were smashed and it was all linked to the Tom situation and apparently Debbie wrote this on Facebook. So was the final way to get back at Debbie and the family was to take Jay. So I heard this too, but Tom's father and Tom were present inside a bar back home and in the bar was Jay. Jay then started to make fun of what happened to Tom because as we've learned, Jay actually got a light sentence. The judge went really easy on these eight people. In prison, Tom's father was serving with the same man that booked the Airbnb out in a nice isolated area all planned. And I just want to point out that this one particular area in Masca only has one road in and one road out. So it's a perfect place for them to do something like this. I mean, many people are asking, why did Ayub book this B&B only hours before he arrived at it? And we learned about that sketchy room in the back. It looks like it's the perfect place to accomplish making someone disappear. So Tom's father made it well known what Jay had done to his son while inside prison. But Tom's father knew that to do anything to Jay in the UK, it would come right back to them. Brad being Jay's best friend, pushed for Jay to go on the lad's holiday. According to Debbie, Jay didn't even want to go on this holiday, but he was pushed to go. The plan was to get Jay absolutely substance up, and it was all pre-planned, allegedly. And then Ayub and Rocky allegedly befriended Jay, and took him up to this B&B, and the rest is history. It goes on to say that they're all associated. The B&B guy will be paid handsomely for being involved, but if they're smart, no money will be directly transferred because of access to banks, etc. So thank you to the user who pointed this out in the comments of my last video, but just listen to what Tom had to say in this live stream. You're just trolling, trolling, trolling. It's stupid though, like you were a young kid. You know what I mean? He got took away from his parents. It's, it's nothing to be joking about and stuff. It's yeah. fucking crazy. So Tom in this clip just said Jay got, quote, taken away from his parents, end quote. This could be a choice of words or a Freudian slip because the official ruling was that Jay had just fallen down a ravine and was not, quote unquote, taken. But the cyber sleuths and all the emails I'm receiving about this gang are saying otherwise. So originally, Jay's mom, Debbie, was receiving messages that Jay owed a lot of money very early on in the case. And Debbie actually pleaded with the person who took Jay to release him. The message that I found very early on in the case was actually from inside a boat. And strangely, that boat, Maruba, disappeared from the same day and time and location Jay was said to have been. Then the boat returned back to Tenerife after Debbie allegedly withdrew funds from her GoFundMe. Many sleuths believe this was Debbie paying off whoever had Jay to return his body. So Jay was found on a beach that was accessible by boat. And I would like to actually show you guys this ravine that he fell down according to the official reports. So the official story is Jay, after three days of partying, dehydrated and hungry, looked at this and thought it was a shortcut. No one, not even his own family, are buying this narrative. I could go into the timelines of how his friends' alleged phone calls do not match up with Google Maps, but I won't bore you with the details. His friends' timelines just simply do not match up, in my opinion, and they're all lying, again, in my opinion. But not only that, their behavior afterwards was also highly suspicious. We talked about how Ayub left Tenerife shortly after, but Lucy also went to authorities and immediately filed a missing persons report when Jay was not even missing yet. What makes more sense? Lucy, would you rather go to the police station or tell your friend who is lost to wait there and take a cab to go and get him. You can even dial the police on the way there. It seems to me like Lucy was just using the police and trying to get them on her side before the truth of what really happened to Jay came out. There's been a lot of strange things in the Jay Slater case, including a landslide that looked manufactured. But not only that, it's been revealed that the person looking at Jay's body in the UK will be the same one that did this to Nicola Bully. 
And one user wrote, quote, more corruption, justice for Jay. And another writes, hmm, that doesn't fill me with hope. I do believe her case was foul play, yet that wasn't the outcome of her inquest. And thank you again, Lola, for your amazing content uh, on TikTok. I'll link her in the description below. People are also looking at this suspicious video of Down the Rapids. You can see how easy it is for a body to go, um, or, or for someone to get lost in her. Very, very easy. Again, it sort of sounds like Down the Rapids was actually gonna say something else about what happened to Jay, but caught himself and kind of just put his arms over his head like Chris Watts did. So if you don't know who Chris is, he murked his entire family and then also called the police to try to get the police on his side before the discovery of his family's bodies. It's a very sad case. But one sleuth writes, he get money from the GoFundMe to be quiet, and he spends the money in Turkey to get new teeth. He is not trustworthy. I do think he was paid to leave Tenerife. Also, his teeth were free. He's shady. You can't convince me otherwise. End quote. So what do you guys think about Jay potentially having this gang of people who he thought were his friends team up on him and lure him out of the rave. Do you think this theory is possible? And do you think that the UK should reopen the investigation and give his friends lie detector tests and ask for their passports? Because, you know, I was shocked to learn that Tom Hilton was in Spain because I thought that he was going to be in the UK because he had that alibi photo of him in Manchester. And then we find out that he was actually in the same country. I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments or any sort of leads you may have. Me and Gabby from the bottom of my heart wanna say thank you to everyone who has commented, liked, and even watched my videos, and especially the cyber sleuths who have banded together to keep bringing attention to this case and hopefully bringing justice for Jay. So if you made it this far in my video, you deserve my email. That is josephmorriscontact at gmail.com to send me any leads. And I will link the petition to get Jay's case reopened in the UK in the description below. Here's a treat, Gabby. She's tapped out. Let's roll the outro. Bye, guys. Love you.